Hi everyone, my name is Ryan H. Lewis, and today we're gonna to talk about the newest version of NPM CLI, that's version seven. If you saw my last video where I talked about Node version 15, then in that video I mentioned that NPM seven comes pre-installed with the newest version of Node. Now, you may not be ready to move to that newest version of Node yet, and I completely understand that, uh, but you can still take advantage of NPM seven on its own. And today what I wanted to do was talk about some of the seven newest things, seven, yeah, that's right. Seven newest things in NPM version seven. Let's take a look. So one of the first things we're gonna talk about is that this is actually the first version of the NPM CLI that's been released since NPM the company was acquired by GitHub back in April, 2020. Now, when I was digging into the NPM version seven, I was actually a little confused because I was seeing NPM version seven uh, release notes and information on the GitHub blog. And that kind of confused me until I remembered that GitHub had acquired NPM back in April. I had actually kind of forgotten for a while, which is actually a good thing. It means that GitHub doesn't hasn't done things to mess up NPM, which is good. Uh, so that's good to hear. And uh, NPM version seven, while it was conceived before the GitHub acquisition, it's actually the first version to be released since GitHub acquired NPM. So that's kind of cool. The next new thing in NPM version seven is workspaces. Now I mentioned this in my previous video on Node 15, but workspaces is a feature that Yarn actually came out with from the get-go. Yarn version one brought this concept of workspaces. Workspaces basically enables you to install different versions of dependencies in a single um, root directory. Workspaces are kind of, they, they do a lot of different things. When you hear about mono repos, workspaces are what makes mono repos able to happen. And so now with the new version of NPM, you don't have to use something like Lerna, which is a workspaces package uh, to get packages anymore. It comes natively by default for NPM version seven. So I actually brought my computer here today. If you didn't notice, I have a laptop here and I wanna take a look. I wanna show you uh, some of the ways that workspaces works. So here I've got a directory that's already got some workspaces uh, installed. I've got two directories, package one and package two, and I've got my package JSON, which I've already um, written out here. And if we look at the package JSON, one of the first things you'll see is that there is a new workspaces property in this package JSON. And the way that the workspaces works is you can either do two, it's an array, and you can do two different things in here. You can either specify a path with an asterisk, which will actually find any workspaces in that uh, path, or you can specify each individual workspace itself. And that's actually what I've done here. I've got package one and I've got package two. So you may also wanna notice is that for this top level, I've only got a few dependencies, happy and left pad. So if I look in one of the packages, you'll see it's actually got its own package and package lock file, but you see it doesn't actually have any node modules folder. If we look at the package JSON, you'll see it's got its own list of dependencies here. These are not the ones listed in the top level. So what we see is if we run npm install, and I already did this before, so it's it's um, uh, a little easier than usual. Uh, you, it will install things. And then if we go into the node modules folder, we'll see we have a ton of dependencies. In this root, it actually only had a happy and left path, but there's a ton more here, such as the AWS SDK, which was definitely not um, used. Uh, in this top level and uh, React, which was used in package one. Um, and then you'll see these funny colored, uh, uh, d looks like directories for package one and package two. These are actually sim links to the directories package one and package two. So that if you need to require them in one of the other packages, it just points to that code. So let me show you what that looks like. If we go into package two, and we look at our index JavaScript file, at the first line here, we are actually requiring, we are importing package one. 
the new NPM version 7 will look at package one and resolve that to the package one directory that we had over there with that symlink stuff. So I can be writing code in package one and then immediately require it in package two. Now you may think you could do that before, you would just access the individual file and that's kind of where the beauty of this shines. First of all, you don't have to go deep into package one and find what you're looking for. You can treat it like a dependency, like a module. And then the second really good thing is that when you actually publish these modules, if you're going to into NPM, well then you've got built-in um, you know, kind of support for that. You can you can uh, publish these each of these separately, which is really cool. So that's kind of like the beginning of Workspaces. There's a lot more to it. All I can say is that I'm really excited about Workspaces finally making it into it into NPM by default, and that honestly, this is one of the features that I always said if you need this, stick with Yarn. And now I don't really have to say that anymore. So that's that's kind of cool. The next new thing in NPM version seven is that NPX, the uh, kind of uh, run once NPM uh, utility uh, has actually been rewritten from scratch to utilize NPM version seven native functionality. So this is really cool. Previously, it was its own package. And even though it came installed when you installed with NPM, now it's not its own package anymore. It's, it's just kind of, built into NPM as we know it. And so um, you may not care about that, like who cares if it's rewritten, uh, but one of the interesting things is now it will prompt you if you are installing, if it needs to install something. So previously, if you said NPX whatever, it would just install the thing that you wrote. And if you made a typo, well, you may be getting something you did not expect. Now it will prompt you to, to make sure you actually want to install the thing that you say you want to install. So let's take a look at that. So if I were to say, um, try to install and in, try to run NPX Calce, um, you would see that, that with the new NPX, this is a new NPX, it is saying it needs to install these packages. Is it okay to proceed? So if you say yes, it'll install it and it'll run it. If you say no, it'll say canceled. Now, you can get past this default behavior by using the dash Y flag. One of the important things to, to remember about NPX is, is any arguments you put after the package that you want to run, it will pass those arguments into the package itself. So if you want to override this default behavior of um, running, um, of checking with you before installing anything, you wanna pass the dash Y before the package name. So I'll say calce and I'll, I'll pass in moo. And you see it didn't do the thing that it just said, it, it just did. It went ahead and installed it without prompting. Now, if I had mis, mistyped that and, and put um, calsat or something, I don't know what it would do, but like, you know, I could have gotten something I didn't uh, depend on. And if I run this again without the dash Y, um, sorry, let's say MPX, MPX rocks. Um, then it doesn't prompt it because Calce is already installed. So this is some new behavior. It's nice to have that safety there because I know I always, as you can tell watching my screen, I type out <laughs> things all the time. So I'm really glad to have this functionality in NPX, which is cool. The next new thing is that NPM version seven is compatible with yarn lock files. What is going on? Are those pigs flying out the window? I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, but uh, this is actually really good. It kind of unifies the ecosystem. So let me tell you how this works. If you have a project that does not have a package lock JSON file, then when you use NPM7 for the first time to install anything, it will take the resolved dependencies in the yarn lock file and the integrity SHAs and use those to resolve the correct dependencies in the NPM repository. Now it'll really only do this once because after that happens, it'll create a package lock JSON file and then it will use that moving forward. But if you want to maintain any sort of resolved dependencies you have, if you're migrating over to the new NPM, then that is a really nice feature to have. They wrote an art blog article 
basically saying why even keep package lock JSON if you're using yarn lock now. And essentially it says that um, because yarn lock is kind of specific to what it does, it doesn't have everything that the package lock JSON file needs. And so it uses package lock JSON file as kind of the um, source of truth after it's being used. The other thing that's nice to know is that after you add and, and uninstall, add and remove dependencies after you've already got that new package lock JSON file, NPM7 will actually keep that yarn lock file up to date. So this is very interesting. It will write back to the yarn lock file. So if you're using yarn or if you want to basically give your developers uh, the choice of yarn lock versus NPM, this may be something that's interesting to you. Another new thing about the latest version of NPM version seven is that it is not the latest version of NPM. And I don't mean that in terms of uh, temporal meaning, I mean that in terms of whenever you have packages, whenever you have packages in NPM, they have tags for the latest versions. That's what happens when you do NPM install package, it will install the latest version. Now with the new version of NPM, it doesn't do that. Let me show you what's going on. So if I run NPM info NPM, which sounds a little inception-y, um, you'll notice that the latest tag here is actually still set to version 6.14.8, which is um, the previous versions, version six. You'll see that uh, version seven is set here as next seven. So they're not setting version seven to the latest tag. And the reason they're not doing this is because there are breaking changes, very important breaking changes that if they pushed NPM seven to the latest, it could kind of break the entire ecosystem. So they are playing it safe. And for the time being, keeping in, keeping version seven off the latest tag. Now that doesn't mean you can't install it. The easiest way to install is npm i dash g npm at, see there's a typo, npm at seven. That will install version seven. So it's easy enough to do. It doesn't matter which version of node you're working with. For instance, um, right now I'm working with version 14. Uh, so you'll be able to install npm version seven. However, on any platform you need to, but you can't use the latest, you'll have to use npm at seven. So it's important to know, you may have tried to install it and couldn't figure out where it was. Uh, maybe you thought I was lying. I mean, how could you? How, I would never lie. Uh, so anyways, NPM version seven is there if you need to install it. And the sixth new thing in NPM seven is one of the main reasons that NPM is not setting that latest tag to version seven. And that is that peer dependencies are now installed by default with version seven. Now it has not been this way since NPM CLI version two. Uh, basically versions three through six did not install in peer dependencies. Instead, they warned you when they weren't installed, but it didn't install them. NPM version seven, basically they figured out, they've made a lot of changes to the way that they resolve dependencies and the way that they build out the tree graph. There's this thing called Arborist, which I don't really have time to dig into, but it is supposed to make the dependency tree a lot cleaner and install things a lot better. And so because they have this new thing, now they can install peer dependencies by default and they've set that to the default and it is basically set up that way in version seven. Now, a lot of the uh, NPM ecosystem is built considering that peer dependencies won't be installed by default. And so by making this change, it's possible it could break a lot of things, which is why they are kind of treading lightly here. But it's important to know that if you're using version seven and if you do use peer dependencies, you're gonna get some different behavior when you run NPM install with version seven. So it's a good thing to know. And then the last new thing in NPM version seven is that it is fast, it is so, much faster than NPM version six. I was running some tests and an install with a project that had around 400 dependencies, was installing in uh, four seconds in NPM seven compared to 14 seconds in version six, which is kind of crazy. Now with these speed measures, your mileage varies. It depends on your 
internet and your package or your project and how many dependencies it has. So, you know, you can't, I'm not trying to say that you're gonna get four second installs for everything. What I'm trying to say is that your performance versus version six will be significantly different. Let me show you what that looks like. So in this pizza lovers package, I've got uh, quite a few dependencies, you know, not, this is actually a small amount compared to most projects, but you know, it's enough that we can play with it. Um, let me show you uh, what we're doing. Okay, so let's get rid of the node modules folder and we'll get rid of our package lock JSON and we will um, install uh, version six. I wanna see what this looks like with version six. All right, we're on version six. Let's clean the cache. I sure hope you know what I'm doing. I, I, I hope I do too. <laughs> All right, so we've got a clean cache. We don't have a node modules folder. We don't have a package lock JSON file. Let's see how long it takes to run this install. Well, clearly I've got a lot of deprecated dependencies I've got to update, so that's, um, that's sad. <laughs> That's work that I've got to take care of after this. Okay, so in this run, we got a 11 second install. So actually not too bad, um, but let's see what it looks like with NPM 7. So 11 seconds is what to beat. And I gave you that, I prompted you with the four seconds versus 14, so already we're a little faster with NPM 6. So we'll, um, we'll see what this looks like. And um, let's clear the cache. All right, now let's run an NPM install and see what it does. It's already cleaner. It doesn't kind of output all that uh, deprecated stuff at the same time. It kind of does it at the end, which I kind of prefer. Six seconds, that's cutting the time in half. That's with a clean cache, a decent internet connection here, and you know, not a ton of dependencies, but you know, here it says it 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 installed a lot of packages, and you can see that it it looks different. I don't know if you noticed with the previous install, but it installed 380 packages. Here it says it installed 135 packages, and it audited 382 packages. I believe what it's doing is it's installing things differently. It's not installing um, duplicates of things, and so as a result it's able to cut the time in half, which is really quite amazing. So I know that people care about install speed. If you care about install speed, NPM CLI version seven is probably what you're going to wanna look at. All right, and those are all the new things in NPM version seven. Thanks so much for watching this video. Again, if you wanna install NPM version seven and take a look, you'll run NPM install dash G NPM at seven to get that downloaded. It doesn't really depend on what version of Node you're running on, so you should be able to pull that down and it start playing with it. Start looking at some of these new things that I introduced today. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider liking it or subscribing to my channel where I post plenty more videos like this. I'll have a new video next week and I'll see you next time.